Okay, everybody, we're on to day two of thermochemistry. I hope everybody's getting the hang of this uh, distant learning concept. Just like you, I'm having uh, to get used to it as well. So, note take suggestions. Um, you should have out a piece of lined paper during these and pencil, and you're going to need a calculator today. We're doing some calculations. Um, you want to find a nice, quiet place to do these notes somewhere where you're not going to get distracted. And just remember that you have the luxury of pausing and or rewinding the video as needed so you can take good notes and um, have thorough comprehension. And a, a suggestion would be to uh, keep these notes in some sort of binder so that you're organized so you can refer to them as we progress further into the unit. All right, another thing that I want everybody to be aware of is that I've linked the textbook onto the digital outline and it's also right here linked. So you can also refer to the textbook as an additional resource. Okay, today's topic is gonna to be energy units and energy calculations. Um, we learned at the very end of the last lesson about the equation for heat, which is represented by the variable Q. Q equals MC delta T. We're going to go through these units more in depth today and be able to solve for, que solve for questions for any one of these variables. Q is in units of joules, mass, grams. Specific heat is in joules per grams times Celsius, and delta T is the change in temperature and degrees Celsius. So once again, this is where we left off. So trying to make a connection to the last last lesson to this lesson. All right, so let's dive on in. So energy units. Um, the first one is a, a calorie. This is a note that this is a lowercase c. And that's the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water, one degree Celsius. That's what a calorie is equal to. And this is used except when referring to food. When we refer to food, we use this capital C calorie or dietary calorie. So right here is some conversion factors that you'll use a little bit. And where you could convert between dietary calories, kilocalories, which and um, scientific regular lowercase calorie. All right, so let's look at another example here. So when you eat a Snickers bar, you are eating 280 dietary calories. See right here? capital C. All right. So how many of the real calories, scientific calories, are you eating this lowercase c? So you could do the calculation by just converting. So if you start out with your given 280 calories, set up a little T table, plug in your conversion factor, which is a thousand of the lower calories, lowercase calories to one dietary calorie and the units will cross out right there and right here, and you'll get an answer of you're really eating 280,000 calories. Crazy, huh? All right, so let's go on, let's look at joules. Joules is actually the unit that we're gonna use the most, so um, we wanna get really familiar with it. It's the standard unit for heat and energy. So these are some important conversion factors that you need to know. This one right here in red is the one you need to know the most. There's 4.184 joules for one calorie. And we're just gonna kind of get rid of that for most of the time and I'll accept 4.18 joules for one calorie. All right, so here's an example question. So how many calories of energy correspond to 48.2 joules? So you're going from joules to calories. So just 
start out with your given, just like we've always done with our stoichiometry. Start a little table, put in our conversion factor right here. We got 4.18 joules to one calorie. The joules are gonna cross out right here and you're gonna get an answer in calories. So 48.2 joules is equal to 11.5 calories. Okay, so I've left some extra examples in here so that you could try them on your own, um, on your own notes. So here's an example and here's the, here's the answer for you to check your work. Let's look at another one. All right, so this is example three. I'm gonna work this one for you. So in this case, we start out with calories and we're going to joules. It's opposite of the last example I showed you. So start out with our given, start a table, and we're just gonna plug in that conversion factor right here. We're gonna put the calories on the bottom because we wanna see this unit right here, cross out with this unit right here. And one calorie is equal to 4.18 joules. And we'll be left over for with the units of joules, 44.3 joules. Three sig figs, three sig figs. All right, so this is an example for you. Practice at home. Here's the flow. So I kind of given you some help. So you want to start out with kilocalories because this is what your given is. And you want to convert to calories. So you're going to go have to go back a few slides and look at that conversion factor. And then once you're into calories, now you can change it into joules. And here's your answer for you to check your work. All right, let's move on to um, specific heat. It's the little C in Q equals MC delta T equation. Um, so we need to understand that what that variable is. So specific heat um, is the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius. And it gets that lowercase c uh, variable. Um, once again, you can look at all this in your textbook. So I want to link the textbook page right here. In most cases, we'll be using water's specific heat. And on the bottom you'll, of the slide, you'll see the value for the specific heat of water. That's 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. You'll probably want to memorize that one. So water has a really high specific heat. So it has a really huge value of a specific heat in comparison to the specific heat of other substances. And it's all based on the, the geometry and the bonds within the substance. All right, so why, why does water have a high specific heat? What does this mean? Well, it means that it takes a long time for water to heat up and cool down. So water has the ability to store lots of heat. And that's become very practical for mankind. Um, for instance, like if you live near, uh, near a water source or near the ocean, you get the marine layer that's existing around you. Well, that keeps the, the temperature moderate. The temperatures can't heat up or cool down too fast. So we get that like temperate uh, climate. Um, another example of water being a really good, uh, or water having a high specific heat is how water could be used in coolant, like in our cars, engines. We put uh, water in there to keep our engine from overheating. So that 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 heat could go into the water and the water, water can, um, make it so your engine doesn't overheat or maybe in the mountains or somewhere really cooled so it doesn't freeze. Okay, so here's a table of the specific heat of different substances. So you can see water's value of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. 
And like, if you compare it to like iron, iron is going to heat up super e easy. Like you have to, if any of you have a cast iron skillet, it heats up super fast. Um, and then it will also cool down real fast. Water doesn't do that. All right. So specific heat capacity or this lowercase c, once again, is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. And it's used for the determining identity of unknown substances. So if we look, if we were to go back to the prior slide, each substance, or let's go back there for a second. So each substance has its own specific heat. So you can solve for C and it can identify what your substance is. So it's used for identifying unknown substances in certain situations. Once again, here's the units, and we're gonna use these units for the most part every time joules per gram degrees Celsius to make life easier for us. And this is the equation. So right, lately I've been talking in the last slide, a couple of slides I've been talking about this, this C, this specific heat right here. So this equation is used for temperature change calculations. You got to have something that has a change in temperature. So once again, Q is going to be, it could be in calories or joules, but we're going to use joules most of the time, 95% of the time. Masses in grams. And then here's our specific heat units, joules per gram degree Celsius. And our delta T down here is our T final minus our T initial. All right, solving for delta T, it's very important that you always, when solving for delta T, it's important that you always find T final and subtract the T initial from it. Um, this is important because it determines whether your answer is going to have a positive or negative value in front of it. And if Q is positive, your system is going to be endothermic. If your Q is negative, the system is exothermic. So whether you could decide if it's endothermic or exothermic is how you solve for your delta T answer. So once again, always uh, find your T final, then subtract your T initial, and that'll give you the right sign. Sign meaning positive or negative value. All right, so I put this video clip in here. I'm gonna post a, a link to this slideshow. So you guys could go back and watch this video on your own time. This is Tyler DeWitt going over a kind of summary of kind of the same exact stuff that I'm doing here. And um, the, minutes, the video is like 10 minutes long or something. You only need to watch up to about seven minutes and then he goes on, on to another topic. All right. So let's, let's do some calculations with that Q equals MC delta T equation. So here's example one. Here I'm telling you we're solving for specific heat. Um, you can also look at your givens. You have mass, you have joules, and you have a delta T. So all you're missing is the specific heat right here. So I made another video that's linked into here. So we're going to watch that video real quick. Um, excuse me here. I'm trying my best to learn how to use a stylus and use one note. So it's a little sloppy, but you know, my techniques will probably improve, I hope. So here we go.
All right, so that's how it's done. So here is your turn. And I've given you the answer right here so you can check your work. Okay, so here's question three. It says, what quantity of energy in joules? So we're solving for, for a Q here because it says solve for energy. So the last example we solved for C or specific heat. So in this example, we're solving for Q. You'd also list all your variables and see them. You know, I got a mass, got yourself a delta T, and you got yourself a specific heat. So all you're missing is, is Q. So I have a video of this one as well, so we'll watch that real quick. Well, one, one uh, in my video, I, um, on the question it says solve for joules and calories. I'll just ignore that part. I just solve for joules.
All right, so here's a example problem for you to try in your notes. And I've provided the answer right here so you can check your work. All right, so your homework is to go onto Google Classroom. I'm going to make an energy and specific heat worksheet. It's going to have problems just like those examples you saw in the notes just now. Um, you're to complete the math problems using DOM equation editor. So I'm not going to have like multiple worksheets because we're not in a normal class setting. So like each worksheet is going to have to count a lot. Um, so you don't want to skip out. Um, so it's going to be one good quality worksheet on one topic and then move to another topic and one good quality homework assignment, so on. So just uh, take your time, do good work, and um, it's all going to have to be done digitally. So use this DOM equation editor to show your math. Show all your math with units, and um, this assignment will be due before 1159, Monday night at 330 before the next session on Tuesday. All right, guys, that concludes this lesson. Um, stay healthy, wash your hands, and be safe.